My new project is a looping system that uses pre-recorded loops that can be rearranged dynamically during a performance. The goal is not to perfectly duplicate the recordings, but to have the ability to play a song from start to finish in a way that no one except the very critical will mind those differences. If I wanted a perfect rendition of a song with only a couple musicians, I'd just run a full backing track. But I like the challenge of using the loopers and to be able to play parts of a song in a new order or extend parts. First thing I do is look at the song to figure out how to break it down to no more than six loops. Having more loops than that probably doesn't add enough to the final result to justify the added complexity managing the loops live. Once I have the loops figured out, I record the drums and bass lines myself in my DAW and transfer the final results to the Electroharmonics 45000. Here's one of the loops in the 45000. For the tracks in the 45,000, the drums are in track 1 and 2, bass on 3, and I'm reserving track 4 for any special sound a song might have. All of these are mixed down so that the volume of the tracks between each song are consistent, and I'm only needing to set the volume of the mixed down track live. I can also add in the mono track of one of the instruments if I find, for instance, the bass needs to be a little louder. The flashing lights on the 45000 show you the quarter note and whole note subdivisions. In the mode I'm using right now, if you start the loop, it doesn't matter what beat it's on. It'll always begin at the beginning of the loop and reset the first beat. Uh, this way I'm not having to watch the lights and look for the perfect instant to click start. Then while the loop is playing, you can cue your next loop at any time using the loop up and down buttons. The new loop will begin when the current loop ends and remain synced to the tempo. That's how during a song, I can change loops and not worry about stepping down exactly in time. Loops can be of any length. I'm not restricted to making each part of a song the same number of measures. In the next example, the hi-hat pattern without a bass line doesn't need to be a long loop, but the verse pattern does. So the 45000 has a stereo mix that goes to the front of house. It's not technically part of my guitar system, it's just on my pedal board. The Pigtronics Infinity Looper, however, is in my guitar system. I use that for a few pre-recorded guitar parts that play through my guitar amp. What's nice about this is that the loops in the 45000 and the Infinity can revolve around each other at different lengths. If I had to put these guitar loops on the 45000, it might change how many loops I need for the song. Here's an example of a loop in the 45000 that plays three times against only one loop in the infinity.
you also saw there that I was able to cue both the start and stop actions of the Infinity. The ability to cue the actions is extremely important. Not only does everything stay synced to the start of a new measure, but it gives me time to think before the next part has to start. Speaking of staying in sync, using two independent loopers is not possible without communication between them. One device has to be the master timekeeper and the other device becomes dependent on the master. In this case, the 45000 is the master and it drives the MIDI clock that the Infinity syncs to. That's why you can see a flashing light on the Infinity that keeps to the tempo and first downbeat of the 45000. Since we are on the topic of MIDI sync, you might be wondering what this tempoed pedal is. I haven't used it yet in the video, but this is what I actually use live as a MIDI clock master. I set both the 45000 and Infinity to be dependent on the tempoed. There are a couple reasons for this. Mainly, I started using it to overcome a bug in the 45000. It seems that when the 45000 is the clock master, the unit will not receive and send MIDI through. That's a problem because I have MIDI commands that I need to send to the Infinity. I discovered that when the 45000 uses an external clock, it does allow MIDI through. Here's the 45000 set to an external clock. The tempo also issues a start and stop command. If you try to use the tap on the tempo, you'll get some entertaining but not very usable results. It's important that the tempo is sending the correct tempo for the recordings in the 45000 and the Infinity. That means the tempo for each song is also programmed into the tempo and I send the programming commands when I switch songs on my MIDI controller. In the mode you just saw, the tempo was sending the start and stop commands to the 45000. I don't prefer this mode, instead I set the 45000 to listen only for MIDI clock and stop. I prefer to start the 45000 and the Infinity with their own foot switches. What this does is allow me to start the MIDI clock in the tempo and the looper's time to sync up before the audio loops begin. Otherwise, if I start the tempo sending the clock and the audio loops begin at the same time, you'll hear fluctuations in pitch and tempo while the other devices lock in. Here's the mode in the 45000 that ignores the start command. In the Infinity, the start command's already being ignored. You can see the tempos are not in sync until I start up the uh, MIDI clock. That's good. However, when I started the 45,000, the loop began on the next downbeat, and it changed that loop to the first downbeat of the measure. The infinity, however, doesn't change the first downbeat when that occurs. That means that although while they are in sync tempo-wise, they each recognize a different first downbeat. What that means live is I'd have to be very careful about how I start the 45,000 to make sure I press between the fourth beat and the first. I didn't like that, so I figured out a better way to start songs. First I send tempo so that the units adjust to the sync. Then I stop the clock and start the 45,000. In the external clock mode the 45,000 will not start until it receives MIDI clock. I'm queuing up the 45,000 to start. Next time I start sending clock, the first downbeat will be set in both the 45,000 and the Infinity, and the 45,000 loop will begin. The Infinity will also be in sync when it brings in its parts, and I never have to be careful about what beat I start the song on. You can also see there that the tempo worked as an all stop, which is handy. 
Plus, if I needed both the 45,000 and the infinity to start at the same time at the beginning of a song, I could do that too. It's rare, but I could send the clock first, and then, because of the differences between the queuing actions of the 45,000 and the infinity, I have the time to press both buttons before the first measure begins. As I mentioned before, the 45,000 will start on the next downbeat and also redefine the first downbeat of the measure, so I have to be careful. The infinity will not redefine the first beat. As long as I start the infinity anywhere in the measure leading up to the start of the song, and I start the 45,000 between the fourth and first beats of the measure, it'll work. It can be a bit tricky, and it's not something I really need to do all that often. Here's an example of that using a recording of the guitar part I would normally play live stored in the infinity. That's it. Thanks for watching, and if you want to see this method of looping use and performance, be sure to subscribe to this channel as I'll be doing more in the coming weeks.